challenges in the future, but there's no doubt that the world is dominated by great powers. You know, states, other powers, and small countries have a limited role. Limited, but not insignificant. But we have to face the fact that we operate within a framework which is um, not always beneficial to the interests of smaller countries. That's the reality. You said the European process is more advanced. It is. The EU is a much more comfortable place to be in if you're a small state. There's no doubt about that. Um, um, we always have the problem of conflicting interests and conflicting ideals and interests. And we have faced that, like every state in the world, in relations with the United States are important to us. We can't afford to deeply offend them. But we, at the same time, we don't always agree. So you have to balance interests and ideals. We got the ideals on the record, but we preserved our interests for what we actually did. So you do have the reconciliation of this kind to undertake. The nature of small states is they are more coherent in their decision making. If you're a small government, you can get the people together and decide what to do and do it. Large states can be incoherent. The United States system of government is inherently incoherent uh, because there are too many centers of power competing, well, politically and within administration. It's not easy to get a coherent policy from that. We, in, in Ireland, always knew that we would have difficulty in getting much help from America in our relationship with Britain from the State Department whose whole orientation was towards maintaining a good relationship with Britain. But we found in Congress, if we could head off the lunatics, lunatic Irish Americans who want to support the IRA, we could get um, assistance from the politicians in Congress and even from the President. So you, we played on the incoherence of the American system to achieve what we wanted to achieve. In Britain, we had problems of incoherence. The British government is also complicated. The cabinet does not really work as such. It meets two hours a week. All the decisions are taken in cabinet committees. The prime minister chooses the cabinet committee and gets what he or, in an earlier case, she wanted. Um, in those circumstances, the policy can be incoherent. And we had a lot of problems in trying to persuade Britain to modify its policy because the policy-making system in Britain was so complex. You had the um, Ministry of Defence, whose sole interest was in preserving the morale of the British Army in Northern Ireland. So if there, was, if there was a misbehavior by soldiers, they would defend it and promote it. One man who was convicted of murder in the British courts in Northern Ireland was reinstated in the army one year after he'd been convicted. That didn't help relations in Northern Ireland, I can tell you. So they had a center of power in the Ministry of Defense, whose objective was not to solve the Northern Ireland problem, but to protect the army. Other centers of power in the system had other approaches. And um, we had to work our way through this maze, try and find the pressure points uh, where people who are more understanding or sympathetic to what we're trying to do and achieve peace in Northern Ireland, and try and uh, d deal with the some difficult areas like the Ministry of Defence. In a small state, that doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. And doesn't happen, generally speaking. It's a small group of people decide what they want to do and pursue that policy. And there's no doubt that small states have a clear advantage in coherence of policy making and policy implementation over many large states. And using that capacity, you can sometimes achieve results disproportionate to your size.